band celebrations in football. We all love great goals and energetic celebrations, but have you ever thought of a celebration that might get you banned for life? A whole country starts hating you? Or fans start throwing rubbish at you? No? Hang on to find out. First things first, what can a player possibly do on the field to get banned for life? Yorgos Katidis might have a simple answer to this complicated question. The then 20-year-old midfielder was playing for Athens against Varia in a match in 2013 when he scored a brilliant goal. It would have remained brilliant for him if he hadn't taken his shirt off and done this. Holy Don't take this shirtless, armless stretch easy as it caused a huge controversy around the world and this Nazi salute made headlines globally, enraging everyone. The Hellenic Football Federation was quick to oust the player and voted unanimously to give him a lifetime ban from all Greece national teams. Crazy, right? But we're just getting started with this list, and the next we have is Cristiano Ronaldo. I never thought Ronaldo would make it onto a list like this, but back in 2019, things got pretty intense for Ronaldo and his team Juventus during the Champions League. They were down 2-0 against Atletico Madrid in the first leg of the round of 16. Ronaldo, being the challenge lover he is, took on the responsibility of driving his team out of its misery. In the second leg, he scored two awesome headers in the first half to level the score. So far, so good. But then came this celebration to mock Diego Simeone. Now, as much as fans would have loved it, several people, including UEFA, raised eyebrows at this wild celebration. Juventus went on to win the game, but Ronaldo was hit with a hefty $23,000 fine for his over-the-top celebration, but it was not as over-the-top as mocking a whole race with your celebration. Note the name Issa Alexander. Everyone used to wonder what this celebration was until it dawned on everyone, and it was not cool at all. In 2020, there was a bit of a stir when Issa Alexander, playing for Persepolis against Paktikor in an AFC quarterfinal, pulled off a celebration that some found racially insensitive. The aftermath was no joke. The AFC, Asian Football Confederation, took a strict stand. Alexander got the boot from the tournament, was slapped with a $10,000 fine, and to top it off, he couldn't kick a ball for six months due to a football suspension. But even this is nothing compared to what happened with Liverpool legend Robbie Fowler for doing this. The only controversy in another unbelievably shining career, but Fowler decided to make it stand out. In the heated Merseyside Derby against Everton after netting a goal, Fowler took things to a whole new level. He dropped to all fours and mimicked snorting substances off the touchline, but the celebration had a backstory. Everton fans had accused Fowler of using drugs and this was his response. Whether there was any truth to the accusation is debatable, but what's not up for debate is that his own club didn't appreciate the gesture. Fowler ended up with a hefty 60,000 pound fine and a four match ban. The then manager, Gerard Houllier, famously claimed that he was merely imitating a cow eating grass, what? which is as absurd as our next player on this list. What the f Emmanuel Adebayor doesn't exactly win the popularity contest. It's like the man has a built-in magnet for attracting hate, no matter where he is or what he's up to. Take, for instance, this time in 2009 when he scored against his old team, Arsenal, while playing for Manchester City. Instead of a modest celebration, he ran across the whole field to celebrate right in front of the seething Arsenal fans. What next? The fans threw everything they could get their hands on at him, which even injured a steward. Predictably, Adebayor got a yellow card for his little stunt. Oh, and in the same match, he decided to stomp on his former buddy Robin Van Persie, earning himself a three-game ban. But it's not even close to the next player who woke one day and caused chaos. Gareth Bale, the player who made fun of an entire fandom with his celebration move. So, the year's 2019. This is a super important match between Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid. After scoring an incredibly good goal, Bale decided to celebrate like this. And let me tell you, what Bale did and his celebration wasn't just a little bit rude. The move called Sleeve Cutter kind of asked the whole army of Atletico fans to shush. And the result? A massive 12-game ban for the Welsh player. But he's not the only player to mock huge crowds. 
Next on the list, we have Chivas Guadalajara players Fabian De La Mora and Alberto Medina. Now, you guys tell me, in a country deeply affected by violence, where thousands of lives are lost each year, what would have been a nice, warm gesture of celebration? Anything, but definitely not this. What the hell? The duo stirred up a major controversy in 2011 with their highly inappropriate celebration involving mimicking a gun shooting. The big shots of football were quick to take action and charged them with 50,000 pesos on each player. Good news, the players realized their mistake and issued a warm, heartfelt apology, unlike our next arrogant brat. Kai Kamara, the player who was making waves from the New England Revolution in 2016. During a face-off against Impact on Decision Day, when the team had already bagged a spot in the MLS playoffs, Kamara decided to spice things up. His celebration was more than just a fist pump. It aimed to stir the pot and escalate tensions with the opposing team. It's a move that got people talking and brought to mind a similar incident involving NFL star Antonio Brown. Now that's how you leave your mark on the game, but the referee wasn't impressed at all and slapped Kamara with a yellow card. <laughs> Next on the list is a player who got his full team banned from the stadium. In a heated Flamengo vs. Botafogo match in 2018, Vinicius Jr. stirred up some serious drama. He pulled off a controversial taunt during the game, supposedly celebrating a shot at making it to the Guanabara Cup Final. He just did this crying stunt and got his whole team banned from entering the stadium ever again. So, what was so sore about this celebration? Apparently, in 2008, Botafogo suffered an embarrassing loss and the players ended up crying in the press conference about refs being biased. And Junior literally tore them all a new one with this stunt 10 years later. A match between Aston Villa and Tottenham Hotspur in 1996 took a bizarre turn. Mark Bosnich, a former goalkeeper with Manchester United, decided to celebrate in a way that made everyone go, what on earth? What the hell? He thought it was a good idea to do an improvisation of Adolf Hitler right there on the field. Not cool, especially since many Tottenham fans in the crowd were Jewish. Predictably, people were furious and criticized him a lot. Football big shots were not behind him either and hit him with a 1,000 pound fine. Well, given how Mark is the guy who was caught outside a strip five hours before his wedding, got kicked out of Chelsea for testing positive for substance abuse, and famous for his Nazi leanings, Bosnich got off pretty easy, unlike our next player. But imagine a celebration stunt that results in epic failures and lands you in the hospital. Now, we know only a few people in the game can pull off front and backflip combos quite like Lamana Lua Lua. But his days of somersaulting 10 times in a row were cut short at Portsmouth. While celebrating a goal, he injured his ankle during a landing. Something similar happened to our next Argentinian striker, who spent eight weeks in a hospital thanks to his failed stunt. In a match with LA Galaxy in September 2008, Fabian Espindola scored an impressive header and celebrated with his customary acrobatics, ending up injuring his ankle. <laughs> Cherry on top was the fact that the goal was ruled out for offsides. <laughs> and that's not it. The injury made him rest for eight full weeks, so he remained out of the field. Too much for a goal celebration. I mean, a no goal celebration. <laughs> but I believe embarrassing is better than receiving death threats, right? Paul Gaza Gascone known as one of the best English players of his time and quite a crowd favorite, found himself in a tight spot after his flute celebration during the 1998 Old Firm Derby between Rangers and Celtic caught everyone's attention. Just so you know, the flute symbolizes the Orange Order marches of loyalism in Scotland, a group that opposes the growth of Catholicism in the country. Now, what Gascone did was play the flute right in front of the Celtic fans. It came as no surprise there, when his club and the Scottish Football Association came down on him, slapping him with a 20,000 pound fine. As if that wasn't enough, Gascone received death threats from the IRA in the days that followed, proving how what might seem harmless can snowball into some serious trouble, exactly like what happened with Bentner. So, during the 2012 Euro Cup, in the Denmark vs. Portugal match, we saw something that we probably didn't want to see. 
After scoring a goal, he revealed the waistband of his underwear, sporting the logo of a betting company. Sneaky move, right? <laughs> well, the big shots in European football weren't impressed by the cheeky marketing stunt, causing Bettner to pay a hefty $135,000 fine and serve a one-game suspension. The big question is why was Bettner forced to pay such a big amount of fines? We'll find the answer in Banned Things in Football, so click on it to find out.